Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're back on the test server and I want to showcase maybe the best progression champion stroke endgame dungeon champion that's been released in quite a while. And I say that because I feel like he can just be used in so many places and have the same effect. So we're going to be talking about uh, Theodore the Savant. Uh, I have seen a lot of creators have done stuff on him, like he is hot news right now but it felt amiss for me not to do my own video as well um i've been playing around with this dude and it just seems so easy to build so easy to build and so effective of what he does it's kind of bonkers honestly i don't there's obviously no reviews on the test server but i feel like dragon i think he could be solo dragon we're going to try that today spider he could be in some of the fastest teams that exist on spider uh, Fire Knight, I think, is probably his weakest area, but still not bad. Uh, Ice Golem, I think he could be probably a solo dude, if not a part of a, a duo. Um, Hydra, he's got crazy abilities. Clan Boss, he can be damn good. Like, he is really coming in, and he's a boss killer. He's a bit like... A bit like how Ninja is a boss killer. I feel like this dude is the same type of thing, but he actually brings even more on waves. Just go through his skills quickly. He's got, uh, he only needs actually nine books, which is also like, good job, player. I'm like, nine books, I think, is about where it should be, nine or ten. I feel like that's not a bad amount, honestly. Um, so we've got an A1 here that got, uh, has got a decreased speed. Book it out, it's a 50% chance to land. It's actually an AoE hit, decreased speed. It's the only ability he's got that does hit. So you're not going to be building him out for crazy damage. You're better off building him either in a control set or just build him with some other utility set. Um, I would also say, like, if you're working your way through the game, then stats over sets with this guy. Sets are really not that important, but you'll see one of the builds I'm going to try today for solo play is quite important. But yeah, you just want accuracy to land his decreased speed here. His damage is based on defense, but we're not going to build him for loads of damage anyway. His A2 doesn't actually physically hit. This means it can it can never weak hit. Yeah, so any um, any affinity we don't care about, we can still deal with them. Three turn cooldown if booked. 100% chance to put two poisons everywhere and poison sensitivity, which increases the damage that poison does and then puts an increased speed on your team. So we've got decreased speed on the enemy from the A1, increased speed on you from the A2. That's like a great Hydra speed synergy going on there. Like really good. Also really good for any wave-based content, and this will do a lot of damage. And then he's got an absolutely crazy A3. So he increases the duration of poisons and burns on all of the enemies by one turn, and then activates, like pops, one turn worth of their damage. Now, on poison, you know, let's say you've got four poisons up, each one's 5% of the enemy's health. That's going to do 20% of the enemy's health damage, like that. Uh, so if you pair him with like a, a big uh, poison champion like a Calvalax or a Taurus or somebody like that, then he's going to be kicking out a lot of damage. Burns instantly do 5% of the enemy's health, but they also chain damage. So if you've got five enemies and you do 5% of, of each of their health at the same time, you're actually doing 25% of everybody's max HP. Think about that in Spider, you're doing a ton of damage, yeah? So... Um, this ability is just one of the best abilities in the game, I would say, for dungeon stuff or for boss killing. Um, also, if they don't have any of these debuffs on them, then he's just going to throw out a weaken for you and give you a bit of a, an alternative uh, use of the skill. So, you know, in Hydra, this is a massive, massive ability to get a lot of damage away really quickly. Um, also, in somewhere like uh, Ice Golem, you know, the poisons exploding don't trigger that retribution hit. So it's also quite a nice way to get yourself through those different barriers in Ice Golem without taking an absolute smack in the face. But yeah, this is a really cool skill. Now, he doesn't place burns himself. You're going to need to pair him with somebody else. Maybe you've just picked up Walking Tomb Dreng. What a great champion to pair with this guy. Um, but yeah, there's a whole lot of synergy around burners and poison champions with this dude. He's also got a bit of, an aura, um, a, bit of a passive here. Gains resistance for poisons out there. Honestly, this is just good really for, I guess, solo content. If you're trying to solo stuff and you need more resistance to get it done, then this comes in pretty good. Accuracy in all battles for an aura. 
In terms of masteries, we're going to be building in with what I would class as like solo masteries here. So masteries like Arcane Celerity, gain turn meter when your debuffs go off. Masteries like Oppressor, gain turn meter when there's debuffs out there. Things like Spirit Haste and more speed when people on your team die. And things like Wrath of the Slain, more damage when your team die. Also Whirlwind of Death, more speed when you kill stuff. So basically what you're looking to do here is to bring food alongside a tier door and see if we can't go ahead and just solo some dungeons. So I'm going to start with Dragon 25. He's positive affinity for Dragon 25. The other four champions are just food. And let's see what, what he could do. Now, there's other champions that can do this. He's not the first. But you'll see there we've landed the poisons across the board. The other guys are going to get a quick turn before they die. And he's going to get a chance to pop. A bit of poison there it's out there doing damage whilst also increasing the duration it's also able to put decreased speed on enemies which means he gets back to his regen set and he help, um, gets his health back quickly and you see how quickly we're kind of destroying waves of enemies here now that my team are dead damn that is actually some fast deaths going on there 30 odd seconds for a solo champion is pretty damn solid now there are as I say, there's other people that can do it. There's champions like Bad L, Withir, uh, Tomb Lord. Uh, there's there's a there's a and a fair few others. Honestly, Eurodream. There's a whole bunch of others. They they follow a similar theme. They either heal themselves and place poison out there, or they have poison skills and you put regen gear on them. And damn, that is quick. One minute onto the boss here. I don't know if I've given him enough resistance, honestly, to really get the job done, but we'll see. I haven't put enough resistance on his build, probably. I was throwing a quick build on. But look at this. Look at how quickly we're demolishing Dragon 25 on his own. He's just like that. Is that all you've got, Dragon? Is that all you've got? 1 minute 25. Everybody else is gaining experience. And he's like that. Oh, yeah. Now, I think he could also form part of some pretty nutty speed teams okay so i'm thinking something like this here so we've got poisons from calvalax from his passive more poisons from taurus we explode one layer then we explode them all should clear the whole wave reset go again for wave two and then we've got a whole bunch of poison burn and explosion for the boss i think it should be pretty damn fast there's other kind of options like this but i feel like this is just going to be as clean as it comes you know, the uh, Eleonora could easily be a Xavier as well. But he just does a ton of damage to get us started. Then the Eleonora's got a nice clean sweep after that. Get a weaken out here. Got a ton of poisons coming everywhere. The only person that um, you know, she could weak hit with her A1, which is a burn. But between them, they've got kind of significant levels of damage for the boss area to fight. See that chunk of damage there? We should then get... Same sort of chunk from Eleonora in a second. She can only do up to 10% of the max health. So you could even ask her not to do combust. But it's worth doing because um, you, you just get such an extra chunk of damage away. It doesn't even matter if people die. And you end up doing, you know, dragging in a pretty consistent just over a minute. Um, and I think probably with a bit more fine tuning. That just becomes better. Oh, that's good. One minute ten. So yeah, I mean it's up there as as a really great option in terms of how to get this done. And I'm sure there'll be quicker teams than that as well. So we're gonna run Ice Golem. I've just increased his stats a touch because I was just too slow really, and I didn't have the resistance to deal with the, the ads on the boss. So same build, all I've done is punched a few more stats into resistance and a bit more into HP. And we're going to run 24. We'll try it with that same team first and see how that runs. Uh, and then I'll see if he can solo in this build. But I think I might be a bit low HP to do it as he is. Let's see. So same concept getting through the waves. This could be um, a, a renegade just to kind of do your resets. But ultimately, we're just blowing up the waves. No problem. Calvalax doing a massive job. Obviously, uh, Dark Kale could be doing that same sort of job here as well. Get a smack here. Get the explosion. Yeah, not, not quite yet. We're just loading up all the poison. There's the first explosion. See, we didn't get a retribution hit. He doesn't do it 
when you do this kind of activation of poison. So we're so far down his health bar already. Two people on the ground doesn't matter at all. In fact, I'd rather perhaps another one dropped as well. There we go. Now we've just got him to deal with it. And ultimately, he's just got to be able to survive a couple of smacks, which is why we needed that higher HP. Also, he needs to be able to resist the heal reduction. Otherwise, his regen set basically is not working. A look at this. We're going to be at like a, what, one, just over one minute run. And that is going to be a consistent team, which is the important thing. Uh, let's just see. I don't, honestly don't know if this is going to work or not. But let's try running him on his own in this build. He might need more stats, I think. I think we might be a bit short on stats for a solo run, but we'll try it. Uh, I'm mostly worried, not about the boss actually, I'm mostly worried about wave two, where they do like a shriek ability and it absolutely smacks. So it might be that he needs to be part of a duo team to get this done, but still, that would be pretty cool. Or I could, e I think he's easily capable of doing it if I just upped his stats a lot, but I didn't want to make it too, um, yeah, too impossible to reach the stats really see here we're absolutely demolishing this wave we're going to get into wave two easily uh full health we've got an annoying block debuff ability here so it's just going to take a bit of time i would have preferred for the front two to have died straight away but it's what it is we're getting a lot of turns away and then we get through to wave two we've just used our big ability honestly so we've got a little bit of time to wait there's the shriek I was worried about. He doesn't hit that often. So it's not like he's going to be doing... He's not going to kill himself, I don't think. He does die. Okay. So we didn't quite cut it on his own on Wave 2, basically. Wave 2 was taking us down because we couldn't deal with the, um, the shriek that was coming. So all I've done here is I bought in a Drex as this kind of like double act. And I'm just thinking that the shriek should... I didn't actually mean to bring in Taurus. The shriek should be able to be under control uh, by the A2 of a Drex. That's, that's what I'm thinking here. So we'll let this play out. See if we can get past wave two. I think if we get past wave two, it's actually capable of soloing the boss. But wave two has been our problem. There you go, wave one is dealt with. Wave two then. So we get a poison away. We get the provokes on the people that are totally annoying at the front here. We start to get our damage done. And obviously Drex is putting on burns, which is going to benefit our Teodor as well. Can we get our explosion out before these guys at the front start doing their, their work? Pretty close, but yeah, everyone's dead. Okay, cool. So we then get onto the boss and, you know, decreased speed on the boss here is useful. Poisons, obviously are good. I don't have the resistance in his build stop that heal reduction coming on which could be actually what kills me i could do with a bit more resistance in the build but side ads dead as soon as the side ads are dead this is home run and yeah damn it's going to end up being a pretty damn fast ice golem 24 1 minute 26 damn that's actually solid and obviously drex could be anyone that's going to control wave two so damn but ice golem also insanely good so we're just going to move on to spider and I'm going to place him in my current spider team just so you can see. I don't have a, like a secure that would do an absolutely obscene time. But all we're basically going to do here is use him to blow up burns. And I can show you how effective that part of his kit is. So I'm going to make sure that he does his chemistry first. So we're going to see it running through here. Basically we get the burns out. or So we get heart seekers from our cold hearts. Burns out from Tumisia. He will then ignite all of the burns at the same time and doing an absolutely obscene amount of damage. We get the second lot of burns out there now. And then he's just going to pop whatever's left. And that's going to be a dead spider 20 odd seconds. It's, it's a crazy time. And if you had a secure as well, I think you can do like a nine second farm. Um, if I had less damage on my Tumisia, again, I would do it quicker as well. Like it's, it's super easy in terms of a crazy comp if by the way you don't have the kaima the cold hearts all that sort of stuff going on let's say you've got a walking tomb drang and this guy together then all you need is protection around them it, the burn will go out it'll just pop the burns and then you're basically just kind of biding your time it's he is an obscene champion for spider
Okay, we're going to try a Hydra hard run just to see uh, how he performs here. So I've got a burner in there. I'm not, he's, he's the only poison champion I'm going to bring because poison really is not where it's at for Hydra. Uh, I think we're going to start just by activating those burns, getting ourselves a good 300k damage straight away. Notice we didn't hit the Head of Torments. We didn't activate anything nasty on us. Get some poisons going. Get our block buffs out. And we can land a Provoke on the Head of Annoying. Obviously, all of the debuffs are blocked. Could do with probably just putting some resistance on my um, Bivald, actually, to be fair. But get some more poisons out where we need it. I think I'm just going to go auto, focus my damage in on the Head of Torment and see how we get on here. But yeah, when I let it run on auto, I'll show you the result at the end. Uh, I'm keen to see how much damage worth of the run actually comes from Teodor here versus, you know, the kind of the champions you would expect it to come from. Uh, you know, how much of an impact is he bringing versus, you know, the kind of normal crew. So let's get it going and I'll bring you back in at the end. Okay, we actually come in here with, what, a 20-odd million run. My Duchess got swallowed up way earlier than I would have liked to. But yeah, anyway, for hard, 20-odd million, not bad. Mordecai's done 8 mil. Bad Elf's 3.7. Bivald's 3.5. And then Teodor's coming at 3.1. I'm actually wondering if his damage of popping poisons and burns counts for Mordecai and Bad Elf instead of just him. Because if that's just his damage from his own poisons and stuff, then that's good damage. If that's including the, the explosions, then it's not great damage. So I'm just going to do a quick test now, and we can confirm. But either way, um, pretty solid in a Hydra team. You know, when you think about speeding up your team, slowing down the enemy Hydra, as well as that extra damage, very solid uh, performance for him. So I'm just going to do that quick test here on Doom Tower. Uh, hard floor one. So we're going to put the burn out from our Mordecai. We're now going to activate the burn. Mordecai at this moment in time has done zero damage. So we're going to activate the burn and then end battle. I'm hoping this counts. So Mordecai took that damage. So actually all of that extra damage that Teodor was doing through activation has gone on to Mordecai and Badel, which means that actually his numbers were considerably higher than what we've just seen which is damn good damn good so look he is in my opinion one of the best additions to the game um if you get him absolute must build for both end game accounts or kind of like up and coming accounts doesn't matter his kit is bonkers and you'll be able to use him pretty much anywhere except for the arena there you go guys i've been hell hades i will see you later